I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I am happy that it's Friday. Happy that it's Friday. <laughs> yes, we're recording on a Friday again. Yes. How about you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm terrific. But you know what we're talking about today? Fertilizer. Yes, again. Yeah, and our listeners say, didn't she talk about fertilizer last week? Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. Different so spin I this actually, week. A different spin. I actually... Um, somebody was listening to this actually no they read the email and just laugh so hard when they <laughs> when they read the email for the one that came out last week yeah mm-hmm. and be, and i think it was because everybody knew what i meant when i said fertilizer mm-hmm. there's actually this if there if we have any baseball fans that listen do a youtube search of um oh i'm drawing a complete blank of who it is Vin Scully, who is like, he was the play-by-play guy for the Dodgers. Uh, I think he just recently passed away. If not, Vin, I am ho- really hope you didn't. I'm sorry if you're, <laughs> if you're listening and you didn't die, but I think he's dead. Anyways, he's very, very old. He might not be dead, but he isn't calling the games anymore. And, and he was trying to find a nice way to say what something was during a game broadcast. And he just said, fertilizer. That's fertilizing. <laughs> and it was just like really, really humorous. So, you know, Vin, if, if you're alive, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say you were dead, but I doubt he listens. <laughs> but so the, 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 pod, the blog post that went out this morning, you know, referred back to the phrase, that's like hauling two tons of fertilizer in a one-ton truck. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, you get covered in fertilizer fertilizer. <laughs> fertilizer so but this week we're going to take a look we're, we're looking at a different spin last week it was our home life mm-hmm. this week it's our work life mm-hmm. and i think we can quickly say well i have a lot more control outside of work than at work but i don't think that's true i think we only think we have more control and so you know, you're you're living through the the wonders of young children and busy house and trying to keep some work time on your schedule and mm-hmm. and all of those things. So, do you think you have more control of your margin at home, or do you think you had more control when you were working forty hours a week? Well, you never worked forty hours a week; it was always more than that. But <laughs> working full time at Macne, what was easier for you to control? So, I think. As far as work goes, margin in my, with my job and my work, I would say right now I'm doing a, a poor job. I think okay. I, I'm doing well with the personal margin. So what we talked about last week, I'd say I'm yep. stronger there. But now because the boundaries are a little fuzzy, I, I live at home. Mm. I work at home. Um, I... It, it sometimes it gets sometimes it's really good and then sometimes I know like right now I'm a little off track, so this is a, okay. a good time for us to be having this conversation okay. because I know okay. that I I can do it, but I I've, sure. I've kind of fallen behind. Well, when you were when before you started working from home mm-hmm. and you were just coming in uh, full time, mm-hmm. was it easier for you to control the margin at work or at home? At work. Right. Even though we think we, and you had a, somebody you reported to. Mm-hmm. So you had a, a leader, a boss that you reported to, but, but we always think that, well, no, no, it's, and, and I, the reason why I asked you is because I know you could, I know how you worked. <laughs> and, and the reason why I was wanted to ask you that question was because you knew how to manage your boss. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in John Maxwell's 360 degree leader, it talks about us leading across to our peers, down to our direct reports and up to our boss. And everyone can lead their boss. They just have to figure out how. And that's going to be an important thing as we're looking at, at, at this margin question. So one of the reasons why I decided to write this was because I lost my track, kind of like you did. Mm-hmm. You know, um... And what it, when it hit me, and this is what I wrote. First of all, I, I noticed that I was stressed. And then I noticed that, well, I got sick. Um, and now my wife actually said to me the other night, she goes, you know, I'm tracking when you're getting sick. 
Like, I knew what that meant. Because <laughs> when I burned the candle at both ends, it, I get sick. Mm-hmm. But what what it hit me was when we were every month, um, we have to look at our at our revenue numbers for training. And we have a budget. And each of the trainers have um, a percentage of the budget that they're responsible for. And when we looked at fiscal year, which begins July 1st through the end of October, I was at 191% of revenue for, to budget. Wow. And it all of a sudden hit me. I'm doing twice the work, just about twice the work mm-hmm. that I should be doing. No wonder I'm stressed out. <laughs> and no wonder I've, I've lost my way. And, when, and, and so the, the, the problem is this. Those folks attending my training didn't notice because I can be on, even if it's a full day thing, I can fake it really well for a day. The people that lost, lost out were my coaching clients because I give them 24-7 access to me. And I was missing emails. And I wasn't responding as quickly. And that's when it hit me. Oh, my goodness, because I'm the guy that I have a piece of paper above my desk that says no shortcuts ever. And yet I wasn't providing the value to people that are trusting me. And the whole reason was I had lost my margin. I let my calendar take over. You shared with me before we started recording that you had designed an ideal week or was it ideal day or ideal week what did you tell me ideal week ideal week yeah and so that you kicked that off in january of january 1st 2019 yep and And i maintained it through probably june and so what what do you think changed because you made it pretty far like new year's resolutions typically don't make it that far so congrats well you know (laughs) because one of the things that i did was i made sure that other people knew about it Uh uh-huh you know, I made sure Hillary, our training manager, knew about it. Um, I had shared it with with Randy, our CEO, and my boss. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so let me just talk about what my ideal week was. So I was thinking about, and I stole this idea from Michael Hyatt. Um, and and the way I'd worked it out was this: I would only do training on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm not going to book anything but training. Now, if, if it looks like I've got time within that, let's say it's a two-hour class or a four-hour class, I can do a couple coaching sessions in there, but I'm not going to do anything else. But that's the kind of stuff I do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm-hmm. Technically, Monday through Thursday, I would accept some coaching clients, but it would be maybe one a day. Fridays was set aside for catching up on emails and working on content. The other thing, and this this is, you know, shame on me, I haven't written anything in my book since July. There's no time. So we can see that even down the road, that's going to be, I was waiting for you to say, hey, when are you going to send me another chapter? But <laughs> so thankfully, I didn't add more work to your plate because I didn't have anything to send you. Mm-hmm. But the, so that the reason why I did that was if your, if your schedule is predictable and you block off time to do certain things, People will recognize that and they won't schedule over you. Now, the problem was I scheduled over that. So you were scheduling into I, that margin that you had. I was scheduling. Set aside. Yeah, I was scheduling right into my margin. And as mm-hmm. I'm thinking about it, I violated it on the very first Monday in July. Wow. Because Baldwinsville Central Schools wanted me do, to do a retreat for their administrative team in Watkins Glen. And I did. Mm hmm. Now, there may be times when you're going to have to do that, but I should have taken Wednesday then as my margin day, mm-hmm. and I didn't. So that was the beginning of it. And then I also was looking at revenue. You know, hey, I can bring revenue, and I can bring revenue in, and I don't ever want to say no to revenue. But the problem was if I, if I would continue on the path I'm on, my coaching clients would leave because I wouldn't be giving them the value. Mm-hmm. So you can't deliver excellence if you don't have margin in your calendar. That's a pretty bold statement, but, so, I, but I firmly believe it. And the way we, uh, we can get there is similar to what we discussed last week, right? I mean, looking at right. the things that are required, what gives the greatest mm-hmm. return, 
and yes. what gives the greatest reward. So I was hoping exactly. that we could kind of share some of those ideas to inspire ourselves and our listeners sure. Sure. to figure out how to do this because it's not too late. Just, I know it's sometimes easy to say like, oh, yeah, it's the end of the year. I'll get to it when I get to it. But I think now more than ever is a really great time to do this as we prepare to move into a busy holiday season where things just seem to fill up quick. Absolutely. So, you know, again, the three R's, what's required. These are things that I absolutely have to do or, or absolutely have to be done, but it may not be me. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do there is I want to identify, you know, which of those things that are required could I potentially delegate to someone else? Is there something, some, something someone could do better than me? You know, if I'm not working in my strength zone, it's going to take me a lot longer to do it. So perhaps I could delegate it to another person or I could delegate it to a system, that type of thing. Um, one of the things that I used to do when I ran self-lock was I would process time cards personally ev twice a day. So every time card of all the employees I entered personally. I started doing it when I was the plant manager. Mm -hmm. It gave me a great picture of the company and what was happening. I continued to do it long after I was no longer the plant manager, till one day the owner, Dan, said to me, David, why are you doing that? Well, 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 and, and so what we did was I didn't delegate it to somebody else. I, dedicate, I delegated it to a data collection system. Mm -hmm. Why not let the guys just scan in? You know, so there could be a system you could delegate something to. What gives me the greatest return? Now, this is the one where really our giftedness and our strengths fit into what 20% is going to, of my effort is going to give me an 80% return, the Pareto principle. So I really need to focus on what are the things that absolutely are going to move the needle the most for me. And those things I have to schedule. One of the things that we, we, we oftentimes make a mistake and we have a to-do list. 40% mm -hmm. of the things on our to-do list never get done. Now, that's kind of, a, now, there may be people that are super diligent like you to get more than 40% or uh, that get more than 60% done. But the reality is that when they've done the surveys, 40% of what people put on the to-do list, they finally get to a point that they just cross off, mm -hmm. which tells me it really wasn't that important. So just be careful. So you take, and for me, I take the two or three ugly frogs, my biggest frogs. Mm-hmm. And those are the ones that I put on my agenda for the day. No more than three. And remember, our, we should tell people to go back and listen to Eat the Ugliest Frog First. Because that was one of our podcasts, during, I think, during the summer. Schedule it. The other thing you need to do. Oh, and then greatest reward. These are the things that speak to my heart. These are the things that energize me. And so there is a topic about strengths I'll come back to at the end. Because uh, I want to talk about that a little bit more. So then once we've got our list, now the other thing we need to do is every day we need to try to block out, unless we're, like for me, if I'm training all day, I can't. If you're traveling all day, you can't. But block out 45-minute blocks of time, 45 minutes to an hour. If you can get to it, do it twice a day for what um, we can call deep work. And I forgot the guy that wrote the book, Deep Work. It'll Cal Newport. Cal is a Cal Newport, yeah. Yeah, it's Cal Newport. And the key there is when you start get into your deep work time, shut everything off. No emails, no phones, no nothing. If somebody needs you, they'll come get you. Mm -hmm. Shut it off, and you would be shocked at how much you can get done. Don't go really over an hour because you won't need to. You'll start to get fatigued. Mm -hmm. But forty five minutes to an hour, you can produce amazing things. The, the next thing I think we need to be careful of is there's the tyranny of scheduling. So, okay, now I got my deep work done and I got this. So now I've got this extra time. This is when I fill it full of meetings. Wrong. And I know some of my coaching clients work for companies where literally people schedule meetings over other meetings. And I wish I could get to the CEOs and say, you got to stop it because your company isn't functioning well because of it. Think about this. If I got a meeting that runs from 9 to 10 and another one starts from 10 to 11 and another one goes 11 to 12, I guarantee you that people are missing significant amounts of critical information from each of those meetings. 
because their brain didn't have a chance to process the music. Mm -hmm. You write the notes, but they all become a blur. You know, it's like we ended up with vegetable soup at the end. Everything was just kind of put in and it cooked for a while. But the reality is that if you cook vegetable soup long enough, you can't tell which tastes like what anymore. <laughs> and sometimes you can't tell which vegetables which anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I came up with that analogy. Maybe it's because it's dinner time and I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't know. But, but the point is, if you just give yourself 15 minutes, that's all, mm -hmm. in between meetings, you will remember significantly more information from those meetings. But we don't. We have one meeting that runs into the next. Um, routines, I'm just going through my list of notes here. Routines, routines are great. Think about how much you accomplish in the morning just by going through a routine. So try to figure out parts of your workday that could be routine that you just kind of work through. And also, and I didn't think about this earlier, remember we did a, we did a podcast on Daniel Pink's book, When. You know, when in our day we should do things based on our, which bird are we, an early bird, an are we a lark, <laughs> an owl, or a third bird? Third bird. So, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm more a lark. I'm more of a morning person. Once we get past, which is really bad if we're recording a podcast at 5.30 at night. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Anyways, that, makes, that probably explains why I can't remember things. But really, once I get past 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm not very good. Um. How about, have I ever told you about the 15 minute miracle? It's a book, right? I think. No, I, well, it might, it might be a book, but I've got, I have a sheet that I got from one of my John Maxwell team colleagues. I think they posted on our, on our website once, our shared website. And everybody says they don't have time. I don't care who it is. Well, not everybody. That's an influence personality profile generalizing. <laughs> Significant number of people say they don't have enough time. The mm -hmm. reality is that everybody has time. They just aren't really good at how they use it. Mm -hmm. And so if we could get, and I've done this with coaching clients, and it's pretty amazing. If I simply ask them to take a day, any day, other than Saturday and Sunday, and write down what they do every 15 minutes, they all find time in their day that they didn't know they had. Mm-hmm. Because if we're going to be honest, you're going to see it. Right. Or you're going to say, you're going to do something and say, why did I have to do that? I had a coaching client once that found two hours in his day and his day was a horrible day. But wow. there were certain things that like 30 minute time blocks where he, like he was at a meeting that he didn't need to be at. Mm -hmm. um, he, was, he was working on a report that his production control person could have written for him. He was going out and interacting with supervisors. And he said, you know, if I would just give them some teachings on this, I wouldn't need to be there every day. So those are the things you discover in your 15-minute miracle. Guard your time like it's gold. Because it is. So th thinking about even where you are now, what kinds of things interfere with your you, you know, you're trying to, to keep your hours to X number of hours per week. Mm -hmm. So how is your time being consumed by others? Tell us about that. Like, it sounds to me like you're just getting bombarded by things. It, I've let myself get bombarded by things. I think oh, that's, the, okay. <laughs> it, it's the, I haven't been very good about building in buffers or boundaries for so you know we I, we talked about this before like the constant bombarding of notifications of email notifications right. social media or whatever it might be um i have not been i used to and this is the thing i used to be so good about not checking my email on my phone yep that yep. actually when i was working full time in the office there was actually there was a very long span of time where I just didn't even have my email on my phone. Um, yep. And I've gotten really bad about that. And so mm -hmm. I have gotten bombarded, allowed myself to be bombarded that way. Um, yep. And some days that, that obviously causes some struggles on my end. I think um, 
where I've been able to excel is now that my older daughter is in preschool two days a week, I've been able to use my younger daughter's nap time as my deep work oh, time that's great. Um, during the day, which is which has been helpful. Um, but then I think some of the struggles I have is that those things can be unpredictable. And that I also fall into the trap of, oh, I have that time. I could take a phone call or do a conference call. And then it starts to encroach on that deep work time, which is something that um, I need to to work through. And then also just respecting that the the allotted time that I, you know, I had committed to, um, I have not been very good at sticking to that number of hours. Right. Um, sometimes right. tripling that number of hours in the week, which is wow. not sustainable. That's not good. <laughs> no. right. um, but I think that's my behavior profile is that I don't, I like to, to be there for people. I don't want to let people down. Um, right. I am an achiever for someone who follows the Enneagram. I am definitely a three. Um, so I think I need to get better at doing that by building in some boundaries, um, yep. scheduling the really important things and reassessing mm-hmm. the things that aren't maybe providing any kind of return. Um, we talked sure. about this recently in a staff meeting. We had uh, Jim Beckman, who he was the president of Crucible, right, for yes. a very long time. How many years? You might yeah, know. Yeah, long time. I don't know how many, but a long time. Long time. Um, we're so lucky to have him on our team. And he just shared an interesting concept one day in our, in our staff meeting. He encouraged everyone to look at what they're doing. And there, he's, he said, there are probably things that you are doing that you would not, that no one would miss if they weren't right. happening anymore and that maybe you're just doing them out of habit um, or, yep. or because it's that activity, it might not be productivity, but it's activity. So it makes you feel like you're doing something important, but you're really exactly. not. Exactly. Yes. So I think yeah. that's an exercise that I need to go through and, and look at. If I did sure. the 15 minute miracle, I think, I don't know. I don't know what that would look like for me right now, to be completely honest. That would be interesting. It would certainly vary day to day. Absolutely. But I think when back when I had a more traditional schedule, um, mm-hmm. I, I actually had read about that exercise in another book. I believe it's called I Know How She Does It. I think that's maybe okay. what it's called. Um, and... That's what an exercise that she walks through in the book is going through. I think she recommends doing it for actually a whole week so that wow. you can see like the, maybe just the whole work week, but seeing how like yep. different days look so sure. that you get a, a bigger picture. But um, that definitely would have been useful for me when yeah. I had a more traditional work schedule. Sure. Sure. You know, so I, and I think too, when you were talking about it, <coughs> excuse me, see what happens when you don't have margin, you get sick. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Maybe that's why. Or maybe my airborne gummies just weren't up to date or something. I'm not sure. But, you know, this uh, thinking about the emails, you know, just because somebody sends an email doesn't mean I need to answer it right now. Mm -hmm. We just think we do. Mm -hmm. So you can shut down your email. If somebody needs you, they'll call you. Right. But we think that we have to respond right away. So one of those things is to to shut down things to kind of even the alerts that pop up can distract you for like 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. So just be careful. Um, one of the things, too, is and I made a note here, schedule a full day where you block it out before and after vacations or business trips. Yes. The day before you leave and the day when you get back will allow you the margin to prepare before you go and recover when you get back before you have to jump right back into a full routine of meetings. Mm-hmm. You just, it takes that much time to process what's happened while you were gone. Um, I really think this is a huge one. Sit down at the beginning of the week, maybe a Sunday evening, and write out the plan for your week for the whole week. I know people are going to say, I keep it digital. Great. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. You get a blue <laughs> ribbon. But... When you, when you go through the process of looking intentionally at each one of those events, you prepare your mind for what's going to happen when that event occurs, occurs, and it 
creates a tremendous amount of, of, of peace and, and calmness as you go into your week. You're not agitated about things that are popping up because you've seen them for the second time. It's, it's like I, I use this example all the time. The first time you see a scary movie, it's scary. But after you've seen it a few times, you know when somebody's going to pop out behind a wall, it's not scary anymore. Right. Because you've prepared for it. Even rough meetings, knowing when they're coming, preparing mentally for them, become less rough. Because well, it's not the first time you've seen it. And another great thing about doing that, because I do, I've talked about this, I do keep my calendar on my iCal, on my phone, computer, you know, it all yep. syncs up. But I every weekend usually on sunday mornings go through and write it all out for the week as well right. and yep. i think doing that also allows me to find that time where i'm going to schedule so basically taking things off my to-do list and yes adding them to my my agenda Perfect. so that i know i'm getting the things done but then also setting aside time like if i know i'm going to have a difficult day um or a difficult meeting making sure i have some time to decompress later in the day or if I know it's going to be right. a crazy day like I also in that same planner schedule our our dinners and our meals so yeah. saying like okay this day is going to be crazy it's going to be takeout um or I knew that this week was going to be crazy so after this I'm actually going out to dinner with my girlfriends and sure. so doing things like look being able to assess that is it's hard <laughs> to do on your iCal but when you're forced right. to write them out and revisit what it's, what it, you see more of what it's really going to yes. look like, then you can exactly. schedule in those times. Or you have to prepare for something if you have a big presentation or a project. Set You are able to set aside more time to prepare right. for those. Perfect. You said it better than I could have. <laughs> it's exactly the reason why I do that. All those same reasons. Mm-hmm. That it's it's just it it gives you such a calmness mm-hmm. and you, a, a feeling of being in control and mm-hmm. enabled rather than so one of my notes here was when you create margin it allows you to live intentionally rather than reactionary mm-hmm. by planning out our week ahead we are intentional about our week rather than reacting to what's happening especially if other people can put things on your calendar that is really big. Mm-hmm. Um, one limit distractions don't get sucked into the rabbit holes of never ending links and my son mike and i have this this problem we we and we even joke about well we just went down another rabbit hole and it could be anything it could be you know a certain kind of old antique boat and the next thing you know i'm looking at one site and another site and I'm not at work i'm doing this at home and the crazy part is there's a couple nights when, when I was sitting on the sofa and I don't even know what time. It was totally dark. And I'm sending this to my son, Mike, who's reading it and sending back. And our, you know, our wives are probably saying, where's our husband? <laughs> you know, but it's it just need to be careful of it mm-hmm. because it, it, it sucks so much of your life away. Mm-hmm. It's, not necess- it's not a bad thing that you're looking. It's not like you're looking at stuff you shouldn't look at. They can be really good things that still take our time away and remember i said we need to guard our time like it's gold because this i can earn more money i could get another job part-time i can't get any more time so time is our most precious commodity Mm -hmm. there was one more point that i wanted to make and that was because it's it sets us up for next week stay in your strength zone do not spend much time on things that are not your strengths People don't pay for average, and you're only going to be excellent if you continue to work in your strength, which is what we're going to talk about next week. Great. How's that for landing a plane quickly? Yeah, I I think it's certainly given me a lot to think about. I'll have to revisit this podcast later. (laughs) Well, me too. You know what? I'm living it, and that's why, and I think you are too. So we're both Mm -hmm. kind of living it at the same time. Yeah. And saying, oh, man. But you know what? Owning up to it, mm-hmm. me admitting to the fact that I lost the margin and I started disappointing people. Mm-hmm. Okay, I own it. It's mine. Nobody put me in this mess. I got myself into it. And if I'm the problem, I'm also the solution. Yep. And all of us can do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I really want to encourage people, just 
do this. Just try. Try the 15-minute miracle. If you think you don't have any time in your day, take a sheet of paper. Actually, if they just email me, I will send them the form. Mm-hmm. And, and if you will, end I up deciding you that you like being frenzied and frazzled and you dislike Martin, then you can always go back. <laughs> Yeah, just go back to But I to don't think you'll of, feel that way. <laughs> I don't think so either. And I guarantee you our families will be much happier mm-hmm. if we're not stressed. Mm-hmm. Anything exciting for the weekend? Uh, well, like I just shared, I'm going out tonight, which is You're exciting. Going out to tonight. Yes. Um, and other than that, not really. Just kind of a cozy weekend at okay. home. It's going to be, be cold. It's going to be cold. Uh I've got some new recipes I want to try. Oh, actually, that reminds me. I, we are on our kind of like last bucket list item other than Thanksgiving, Ooh. but that's going to happen no matter what. So this yes. weekend we will be having our harvest dinner, which is the last thing on our bucket list. Everything else has, Super. has been done. So I've got some new recipes that I'll be trying for that, and hopefully they're good, and we're going to do it. And and lots of pictures, right? So yes, that you can I have build photographed everything. The... Yeah, perfect. Yep, I, I made sure to, that I've photographed everything that we've done. So that and they might they're not perf- they're not all perfect pictures. We had our picnic the other day. It had to be an indoor picnic, and um, the pictures That's are awesome. <laughs> are subpar. But I got them. So That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So our, our church actually is having its harvest dinner on Saturday night, and we, we do it for the sole purpose of inviting, there's a retirement center down the street, mm-hmm. and we invite all those older folks to come up and just have an evening with us, because a lot of them don't have family, that's so and they nice. may not have Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. so that's what we do. Um, and I just, I was thinking of something I'm going to share, that, so a lot of us have pumpkins that we're sitting around as part of our decorations for, for the fall. Mm-hmm. If you have a pumpkin that you haven't carved, and it still has its seeds in it, my son-in-law takes his pumpkins and he just kind of places them in a garden. Just takes them and sets them in a garden. Mm-hmm. And as they begin to decompose, the seeds go in the ground and he grows pumpkins for the next year. Oh, wow. So I'm going to try that. Yeah. I've got a pumpkin. I went to the market a couple weeks ago. I bought a pumpkin. It's sitting on a chair by our front door. And as soon as Thanksgiving's over with, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to set it in between i have a couple grape barbers i'm going to set it there and maybe next autumn we will have our own pumpkins i'll have to give that a try because i think we have only one that we didn't carve so there you go just find a spot in the garden or somewhere where you can just drop it and hey andrew does it and it's amazing how many pumpkins he gets wow okay another tip for our listeners awesome (laughs) don't don't waste a good pumpkin right but they didn't know they'd be getting agricultural information See, from us today we're also an agricultural <laughs> site so all right with that i'm dave freund i'm marissa norcross and this was the next page mm-hmm.